Hello everybody and welcome to my video where I look forward to the light novels that will be releasing next month, that being October of 2017. I try to keep all of the titles in this video, but every now and then I miss one. And in that case, I always add them to the description of this video. I also have a post on my website, justicearstone.com, where I post all of the titles that will be coming out in the month. I keep that list up to date as well, so you can check either spot if uh, to see what the most up to date list is. I also have order links that you can order any of the titles if you're interested. Those are for .com, .ca, and .uk of Amazon. You can buy anything through those links, and I will earn a four to five percent commission, which I then turn around and use that money to buy more light novels, which I review here. So as always with these videos, I'll be doing it in two parts. The first part, I'll go through all of the titles that are releasing in October. Any brand new volume number ones, I will read the synopsis or the blurb. And then in the second half of the video, I will read the blurbs for any of the volumes two and up. That way, if there's any spoilers that you want to skip, that way you won't be encountering them, hopefully. Uh, I do have timestamps in the description down below if there's a specific title that you want to check out. So with all of that said, all that housekeeping done, let's get right into the list. On October 1st, we have volume number three of Blue Steel Blasphemer. This one, of course, from J Novel Club, ebook only at this point. I've reviewed volume number one of this series. It's a very kind of interesting isekai slash fantasy slash gunslinger type story. There's a lot of different components going on in this. Um, the writing, though, I think managed to hold it all together. Uh, I do have volume number two loaded on my Kindle. I just haven't had a chance to read it yet. Well, the Kindle app. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Uh, as you can see, I've got sort of like a bunch of video books on the back shelf here that I need to read, as well as about four or five volumes on my iPad here. So... Yeah, but I do have the book and I do want to sort of continue with the series at least the first or at least the second volume just because the first volume was decent and I kind of want to see where it goes from there. On October 3rd from J Novel Club again, we have volume number 7 of Invaders of the Rokujoma. Now, of course, this is another one that I've only reviewed volume number one. J Novel is pumping these puppies out once a month at this point. They did three in the first month. So I am way, way behind and probably will never, ever be able to catch up. It was a fun series. Uh, the first volume was fun. It's a big harem type story. I have heard from a number of you that volume, I think it's this volume actually, volume number seven is where the story sort of really kind of kicks into higher gear and becomes a much more interesting story. Rokojoma is still ongoing in Japan. It's now into like the mid twenties in terms of the volumes that have been released. On October 7th, also from J Novel Club, J Novel Club kind of owns the beginning of the month. We have volume number three of Ari Ferretta from Commonplace to World's Strongest. Again, this is a series that I have actually managed to keep up with. I've read volumes one and number two. It is an isekai series which has a slightly darker, edgier type main character but uh, certainly plays into that whole OP archetype. But you know what? There are some definite fun moments to it all, and uh, it is one of the more really dungeon divey type isekais, at least that I've kept up with. So, so far, not too bad. I kind of like the series, so I'll be checking out volume number three when it comes out. On October 10th, we have a book from Viz, Believe it or not, uh, they often will put out books that tie into their anime properties, uh, like when there was the Naruto books, they did those. This one, however, is kind of interesting. It is the novel Junei Tyson, Zodiac War by Nisio Isin. Now, if you keep up with anime releases, in the month of October, we're getting the anime starting of this book. And it's a one shot, like it's a one volume only story, and uh, it's coming out in hardcover from Viz. So, 12 warriors enter a death match, but only one can survive to win the ultimate prize. Rampage, weep, kick.
kill. Every 12 years, the 12 signs of the Chinese Zodiac take the form of warriors and engage in the ultimate battle royale. They face one another in battles to the death, using all the powers of their star signs, and the sole survivor is granted the ultimate prize, a wish, any wish. Actually sounds like kind of a fate ripoff a little bit, but uh, I have heard some decent things, and certainly the preview videos of the anime look really cool. Um, so I'll be checking that one out for sure. And uh, again, you know, fans of Nisio Isin, uh, the Monogatari series, uh, the decapitation that we got. It's kind of interesting, though, that Vertical has pretty much owned all of the Nisio Isin books so far, but uh, Viz got this one. Maybe because it was only just a, a one-volume type story. On October 13th, getting back to J-Novel Club releases, we have volume number three, Secondus of the Faraway Paladin. So, interestingly enough, volume number three of the Faraway Paladin was two parts. So, we had the first one, and now this is Secondus. Uh, I have read volumes number one and two of the Faraway Paladin. It is a really good series. Very well written. Uh, it's a born-again-into-a-fantasy-world type story, but the way that the main character uses his knowledge from his previous life, it's it's more used as motivation as opposed to giving him cheating knowledge or better magical powers or what have you. Uh, the first and second volumes were really, really good books. Um, this, this series probably has one of my favorite magic systems of any of the light novels that I've read so far because it's very simple and yet there is just enough complexity that magic is not simple, it is not easy to do, and it can be very dangerous. But the magic, how it is done, ties in to the world itself and to the whole world building. So it's a really, really good series. One of the ones that I, I really do recommend to people. Um, I have not read the first part of Volume 3. Uh, I've been kind of putting it off, admittedly, because somebody told me it ended on a hell of a cliffhanger. So I thought, maybe I'll wait until the second part comes out. So that will be happening on October 13th. So watch for me to start reading volume number three of The Faraway Paladin soon. On October 17th from One Piece Books, we get volume nine of The Rising of the Shield Hero. This is a series that I've read the first, uh, what is it now, six volumes of? I've read the first six volumes, really like this series. I do have volume number seven uh, to read, and then I've got to get eight so I can get caught up. Uh, another isekai-type series uh, with this character who's brought into this fantasy world. It, it really, when it came out in particular, was probably one of the first ones that featured a main character who was not a super nice guy and did not have things very easy. In fact, he had things incredibly tough in this new world. So it really kind of pulled me in that there was a very different type of main character in the series. We've gotten some more type of books like that since then. But Rising of the Shield Hero is a series that I've really enjoyed up to this point. And like I said, I've uh, still got a couple to read to get myself caught up again. On October 19th from J Novel Club, we have volume number four of How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom. I have read volumes number one and two. Excellent, excellent books. Uh, one of you commented, oh, I can't remember who it was. Um, I think it might have been Captain Yantosu. Uh, but anyway, one of you did comment and you said that Volume 3 was a very different tone and very different from Volumes 1 and 2. I haven't gotten a chance to read Volume 3 yet. Uh, now Volume 4 coming out. And actually with Volume number 4, I'm just trying to think, I think that catches us up with Japan. Uh, if there is one more, there may it's only a Volume 5. Like Japan, is, we're very close to being caught up with Japan releases with this one. Um, but I can only say Volumes 1 and 2, really, really good. A very different take on the whole isekai, much more of a strategic economic 
view in terms of how to rebuild a kingdom as opposed to just an OP character who kicks a lot of like monstrous butt. So very different series, well-written, interesting. I do recommend it based on volumes one and two, but uh, I obviously need to get caught up before I can say 100% sure that the series continues that strong. On October 25th, from J Novel Club, shocking, we have volume three of If It's For My Daughter, I'd Even Defeat a Demon Lord. This is a series I am caught up on. I've done volumes one and two, done reviews on those. Very much a heartwarming, very cute, slice of life type fantasy series. Uh, I have heard from you, it gets a little bit darker, and we do get a bit more into the Demon Lord aspect of things in the next couple volumes. But uh, Volumes 1 and 2, very heartwarming, very sweet. Uh, a nice sort of break if you've been reading a lot of other dark stuff so far. On October 27th, from J Novel Club, we have volume number 5 of In Another World With My Smartphone. Now, the anime is just ending for this. We're coming to the finale of this season's anime. Uh, any of you watching it? Is it any good? I've read volumes one and two of this series. It's very lighthearted, very much a heart-on-its-sleeve type series. Uh, I am interested in reading more of the series. I, I, It's just, again, like trying to keep up with everything has been very, very difficult. But it is one of those series that I enjoyed, Volumes 1 and 2. They were fun. I mean, they're they're very, again, it's kind of lighthearted. It's very much, it doesn't try to be pretentious or pretend that it's anything other than what it's, it is, which is a OP character on a fun romp across a kingdom, basically taking over the place because he's so amazing in all ways. Not just because he's OP, but just a great guy and harem and, yeah, you know. it. But again. It's fun, it's lighthearted, uh, at least Volumes 1 and 2 were, I can't say for anything beyond that, but uh, definitely a series that I did want to give more of a chance to and read a few more volumes with. But again, if you've been watching the anime, what do you think? Also on October 27th, and also from J Novel Club, we have Volume 6 of My Big Sister Lives in a Fantasy World. Again, this is a series that I only read the first volume, which I liked. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't one of those books that I was like, you know, oh, I hate this, I'm not going to continue it. It was fun. It was a fun series, but I just, again, you know, I have to make choices when there's so many light novels now. It's funny, when I started this channel and started sort of devoting this channel to light novels, I kind of thought that, oh, there's enough that I can do, like, one review a week, and that's fine. And now, like, I'm struggling to keep up doing two and three volume reviews a week, even if I manage to do three volumes a week, I still can't keep up with all the releases. I honestly didn't think that was going to happen, you know, two and a half years ago, three years ago. Anyway, this was one of those series that I did enjoy the first volume, but it was one of those series that didn't grab me so much that I was like, I absolutely have to keep reading. Uh, so I haven't. Uh, it would be great if things lightened up. This would be a series that I'd probably check out at least the second volume on and see what it was like. Finally, on October 31st, we come to the very last day of the month, and this is when we are getting all of our Yen On titles, one of which I know is going to be huge. Actually, there's a couple titles on this release in October for Yen that are probably going to be really big. Uh, first one starting off with Volume 5 of ReZero, Starting Life in Another World. You guys, if you watch the channel, you know I'm caught up with this series. I love this series. I've been reading it like crazy. I review them as soon as I can. Uh, they're not ones that I put off. Uh, it's, it's a really good series. It really is a good series, and I've been enjoying it a lot. Uh, like I said, big title for Yen. I mean, no, ReZero is still really popular in the community. We also get volume number four of Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon on the Side, Sword Oratoria. This, of course, being the side story, the spin-off of Don Machi. This one uh, with Eyes Wallenstein giving us sort of, um, telling us about what, like, family, Familia Loki is up to when we're focusing on Belle in the main series. So all sort of, like, background stuff that... When we meet the Familia, we're kind of like, oh, what have you guys been up to? And then this story is telling that. It's also building up Isa's background and her backstory. So 
I've heard from a number of you that it's fairly decent. Uh, the anime apparently was not that great, but that the actual series itself is fairly decent, which, to be honest, doesn't surprise me a whole lot because I kind of felt the same way. That was kind of the same reaction with the Don Machi, the main series. The anime, a lot of people didn't think the anime was that great, and yet a lot of people really love the light novels, myself included. So... I don't know, but uh, this is just one that I've I've read the first volume. I liked it. I mean, it's it's Don Machi, but again, just one of those choices I kind of had to make that I was like, well, I'm keeping up with the main series, and I really don't have time to read a side story, and that, that, those are just the hard choices you have to make sometimes. Now we come to the one that I think is going to be the big release for Yen On, and it is volume number one of The Empty Box and Zeroth Maria. This one has sat at the number one spot of my anime list for the manga slash light novel list for I don't know how long. I don't. I think it's been kicked out of the top spot since then, but man, for a long time, it was like right up there at the top of that list. And this is one that a lot of people have said to me that they are very excited to read. I'm very excited to read it just because I think of the hype that everybody else is having on it. Kazuki Hoshino leads the easygoing life of a typical high school student until the appearance of a new girl in his class turns his world upside down. Introducing herself with a promise to break Kazuki is abnormal enough to make an impression, sure, but why does she seem so familiar? This series, I don't know really anything about it. I just know that everybody says it's awesome. So I'm really looking forward to checking this one out. We'll, uh, we'll see what that's like in October. I, I will be reading that like as soon as I get a copy. I, that'll be, I'll be reviewing that. We are also getting volume number nine of Log Horizon. Now this is a series that... I loved the anime of this series. I watched every single episode. The only problem with that is that the anime adapted every single book currently in print in Japan. So this one is actually the second last book of what's currently in print in Japan. Somebody told me that the web novel has since sort of continued, but there hasn't been anything in print. So I don't know what's going to happen. Like they're just going to hit volume 10 and stop until... I don't know. We'll see what happens, but this technically is the second last volume of Log Horizon when we go by what's currently in print. Then we have volume number five of Psycho May. Uh, this one, I've read volumes one and two. It's a fun and cute series. This is the second last volume. There's only six volumes in this series, so it's a pretty short series. Um... Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, you know what? I volume number two, I liked it. I had a couple of nitpicky points in it. Uh, I've heard from a couple of you that some of my nitpicky points kind of keep going on, so I've been eh, kind of like a little bit lazy about whether I want to pick up volume number three or not. But then at the same time, I'm kind of like, well, I've read a third of the series. I've read a third of it, so I should just kind of power through and finish it. Anyway, we'll see what happens, but volume number five is coming out at the end of October. Then we get another book, and it'll be interesting to see whether this makes as big a splash. This is Your Name, Another Side, Earthbound, which is a sort of spin-off novel of the Your Name movie, and of course it got a light novel adaptation that Yenon has released previously. Mitsuha is a young girl living in a rural town named Itomori and is fed up with her life. One day, her family and friends notice she's suddenly acting strange. Little do they know, a high school boy from Tokyo named Taki Tachibana found himself randomly switching places with her when he fell asleep. But he has no clue how to act as a high school girl in an unfamiliar place. This is the story of the hit novel Your Name from the perspective of Mitsuha's friends and family as they deal with her strange new quirks and avoid disaster. And then finally, for the month of October, we have volume number three of Infinite Dendrogram. This being the newest one from J Novel Club uh, involving a character who is in a VR MMO 
There's no strings attached. The kit is literally just playing a really amazing VR MMO. I really liked volume number one. I've just started volume number two. Well, I'm about 15% of the way through it. Um, and that's actually going to be my upcoming review probably later on this weekend. So it's a really good series so far, at least based on volume number one and what I've read of volume two. A uh, little bit different take on the whole VR MMO. Enough that it is interesting and engaging and different. It's quite well written. So I'm hanging in there and sort of seeing how this series is, but volume number three will be releasing at the end of October. So those are all the titles that are releasing in the month of October 2017. Let me know in the comments, which ones are you most interested in and most excited about? Let me know if I'm the only one that's uh, kind of interested in this whole empty box Maria thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm not. But I will now go ahead and read the blurbs of all of the other books that I haven't read. You'll notice that obviously there's not a lot of volume ones this month, so there's a whole lot of blurbs. So if you don't want any spoilers, feel free to turn off the video right now. But uh, if you want to, well, here we go again. So, October 1st, Blue Steel Blasphemer, volume number 3. Yukinari has created a viable system of agriculture for Friedland, and the town once reliant on their Erd God's whims looks like it might finally be able to thrive on its own. Yuki seems content to settle down at his sanctuary along with Dasa, Berta, and Ulrike, the Erd God from Rostruch, when a unit of the missionary order arrives in town with mercenaries on their heels. October 3rd, Invaders of the Rokujama, Volume Number 7. With the end of the year approaching, things are getting busy around Corona House. Even though it's winter vacation, there's a new play to get ready for. Kotaro has picked up a new part-time job that no one seems to know anything about. And Ruth has decided to take up martial arts training. Come January, preparations for the Silver Princess and the Blue Knight Part 2 kick into high gear. But when an old rival reappears, dead set on revenge, Kotaro may be in for the trip of a lifetime. October 7th, Ari Ferretta, Volume Number 3. Meetings old and new await our hero, who has begun to walk down the path of the world's strongest. Along with some farewells. After clearing the Raisin Labyrinth, Hajime and Yue welcome Shea into their party and make for the independent city-state of Furen. They get roped into helping the Adventurers Guild look for a certain missing person, leading to an unexpected reunion with someone Hajime thought he'd never see again. Shortly thereafter, Hajime has a run-in with one of the strongest creatures in the world, a black dragon. Does Hajime have the resolve to bear the burden of being the strongest? October 13th, The Faraway Paladin, Volume 3, Secondus. Will and his new allies at last set out for the Rust Mountains to face the dragon Valis Circa. After a nostalgic reunion and an unexpected encounter, the curtain of battle must rise in the lost underground kingdom. What fate awaits the Faraway Paladin? The god of undeath is clear. I will say it once more. If you challenge him, you will die. October 17th, The Rising of the Shield Hero, Volume 9. I will see to your punishment. Come at me! Yomogi, a female samurai, attacks Naofumi and his team. The shield hero, Naofumi, finds himself separated from his companions and reduced to level 1. With the help of Kizuna, one of the holy heroes from the New World, he is able to reunite with his friends. Now Fumi prepares to battle their enemy, Kyo. But then Yomogi attacks, declaring she is acting on Kyo's behalf. In the middle of battle, Now Fumi notices something strange about her powerful weapon. But what is it? Find out in Volume 9 of this otherworldly revenge fantasy. October 19th, How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom, Volume 4. After the war with the Principality of Amedonia comes to a close, Provisional King Soma receives an unexpected message. It's a request for annexation from his former enemies in the Principality. 
Facing a civil war and an invasion by other countries, the principality now needs the Alfredan kingdom's strength in order to fight back. Soma agrees to the annexation and summons those who play an important role in the defense of the principality to Vaughan for an award ceremony, but the princess of the principality, Roroa, is hiding in with the mountain of gifts they give to him? October 25th, if it's for my daughter, I'd even defeat a demon lord, volume number three. The skilled young adventurer Dale at last returns to his base of operations in the town of Cruz, after the long journey he took with his adopted daughter, the devil girl Latina. He feels a brief moment of relief when, as he watches Latina greet Kenneth and Rita with a smile and start handing out souvenirs. But wait, what's Helmine doing here? October 27th, In Another World with My Smartphone, Volume Number 5. The newly crowned 16-year-old Grand Duke of Brunhild, Mochizuki Toya, is just starting to get the hang of managing a nation. What better way to christen his duchy than to host a party with all the other royals in the region? Laughter, fun, pinball? But it's not all fun and games. Toya's search to uncover the truth behind the phrase and Babylon bring him to the depths of the darkest forests and the caps of the snowiest mountains. Not only that, but new territory means new responsibilities, and soon enough the eyes of the Vatican fall upon him. Blasphemy, they scream. God is no old man. He is a magnificent being of light. How will Toya react when even the Pope challenges the honor of the old man that gave him a new lease on life? The bells toll for a riveting tale of swords, sorcery, and savage tribals? My big sister lives in a fantasy world, volume 6. As the war for the evil god's vessels begins to escalate, an even more terrible threat comes to Seishin City. When Natsuki runs away, fearing for her life, Yuichi and his friends try to search for her. Their pursuit will lead them not only a new, deadly enemy, but a final understanding of how Yuichi came to have Soul Reader. October 31st. ReZero, Starting Life in Another World, Volume Number 5. It's been three days since Subaru and Amelia separated on the worst possible terms. Subaru has fled to Crouch's mansion, letting Rem tend to him while his heart festers. Gloomy and distraught, Subaru ignores his instructions to stay put and returns to Roswell's manor. But what he finds when he arrives brings the spiral of death and despair even closer. Is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon, on the side, Sword Oratoria, Volume 4? After the tumultuous events in the dungeon, Eyes has finally reached the vaulted level 6. But in spite of this amazing news, the Sword Princess seems to be completely depressed. There are two reasons. The first is that she finally managed to meet the white-haired boy again, but once more... He ran away from her with everything he had. The second is that the monster tamer she fought so hard against knew her name, a name that absolutely no one else should know, and yet... Meanwhile, from the depths of the dungeon comes a mysterious crystal ball that's about to plunge both underground and surface worlds quietly into chaos. Log Horizon Volume 9 When the catastrophe hit... American Elder Tales player Leonardo was one of the many people trapped. Stuck on the Chinese server with none of his friends and surrounded by thousands of monsters, his situation is hopeless, until a headstrong girl comes to his rescue. Konami, the former debauchery tea party leader, recruits him for her party. Along with the hero Elias, the blank-faced healer Coppelia, and a strange white horse that can talk, the group resolves to travel to the Japanese server, the only place where the new expansion pack unlocked before the catastrophe struck. The long trek eastward begins. Psycho May, Volume Number 5, Murder Machine and the Catastrophic Athletic Festival. Even cutthroat murderers have school athletics festivals. 
aiming for the top in the school's first murder-a-thon, Kiyosuke and his classmates suffer through back-breaking conditioning. His life gets even more complicated when Renko's mother, Reiko Hikawa, pays a visit. She gives the pair an ultimatum. If their class doesn't win the athletics festival, Kiyosuke and Renko can't get married. Can he sort out his ambiguous feelings for Renko while surviving the upperclassmen's bloodlust? Infinite Dendrogram, Volume 3 the day after Ray and Hugo faced off against the vile Goz Maize gang, the city of Gideon was far livelier than usual, brimming with excitement and anticipation for a certain event. As one would expect from a metropolis bearing the t title of City of Duels, the event was a match between two highly notable duelists, Figaro, the local hero, and Zunyu, one of the most powerful individuals from the Far East Empire of Hwang He. Both were masters wielding the powers of superior, superior embryos, and both would give their all to fight, make merry, and emerge victorious. But a malicious plan unfurls itself in the shadows. Who is it that seeks to strike the kingdom of Altair at its most vulnerable? More importantly, who will survive the clash of the superiors? So those are all the books that will be releasing in the month of October 2017. If you've hung in there for the entire video, thank you very much for doing so. These ones always get pretty long with all the titles that are coming out every single month. Again, remember, if you want to pre-order any of these titles or order them, depending on when you're watching this video, I do have links in the description down below. That helps me make a couple of bucks so I can buy more light novels to review here. So if you're new here and you love light novels, you should consider subscribing to the channel. I do two to three reviews of light novels every single week, and I also do a weekly countdown of the top 10 selling light novels in Japan. Thank you all for joining me in this video, and I look forward to seeing the next one. Till then, bye bye for now.